Is the Bible timeless? Artists, musicians, and athletes influenced by the Bible. So far in our whirlwind tour through the centuries of people changing the world, having been influenced by the Bible, we've looked at world leaders, scholars, translators, and authors, explorers, scientists, and medical professionals. Now in this video, let's look at some of the artists, musicians, and athletes who have made their mark in the world because of the Bible's influence. Let's start with Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was one of those men who did it all, a true Renaissance man. He was more than an artist. He was also a great thinker, scientist, and inventor that lived from 1452 to 1519. Da Vinci kept detailed notebooks of inventions, such as his plans for machines that could fly and human anatomy. But he was most famous for three paintings. The first is the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. Her eyes follow you whatever angle you stand looking at her. The second is the Adoration of the Magi in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. And the third painting is The Last Supper at the Convent Santa Maria del Grassi in Milan, Italy. It was 1495 when da Vinci started this wall mural for the convent, and he finished it three years later. Da Vinci also experimented with a mixture of oil and tempura paint to capture the look of an oil painting on a wall, and it worked. As with many artists of that century, the stories of the Bible became a way for the truths that it contained to be expressed to those who couldn't read. His paintings all these centuries later are still studied for their technical skills, but even more for the truths that he painted. Rembrandt. In the 17th century, when artists were painting mainly still lifes, landscapes, and portraits, the Dutch painter, simply known as Rembrandt, painted more than 300 scenes from the Bible. His talent lay in the way he could paint faces, and especially the eyes, which are the window of the soul. He gave his audiences a real look at how ordinary man could be touched by the divine God. Art experts have called Rembrandt one of art's greatest storytellers. His Bible paintings were personal for him, as he often painted himself into the work. For example, in this painting, called The Raising of the Cross, he painted himself in as the primary person erecting the cross of Christ. He was dressed in his own contemporary clothing, and it shows the responsibility he felt for Christ's death. The 75 original Rembrandt masterpieces that survive today are hung in museums all over the world and allow Rembrandt, even in death, to share his love for the Bible with the world. George Friedrich Handel. Handel was born in Germany in 1685, but became a naturalized English citizen. His work was primarily written for the organ and contain many biblical themes. His most well-known masterpiece is called The Messiah. Handel took verses gathered from his friend Charles Jennings and put the words to music. It's the story of Jesus written for the Easter season, but eventually it was performed mainly around Christmas. This was due to the regal Alleluia Chorus, setting the announcement of Christ's birth to choir, strings, and brass. Some believe that the king, George II, was so moved by this piece that he stood up during the Alleluia Chorus, and since the king was standing, the audience had to follow suit. From then on, and even today, when the Alleluia Chorus is about to begin, everyone stands. It's one of the most inspiring pieces of music ever composed, then or now. 
Johann Sebastian Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach was born in Germany to a long line of musicians. In fact, his father was the town musician and taught him to play the violin. Johann was raised a Lutheran and was heavily influenced by Martin Luther. He owned two copies of the Luther Bible, which he annotated in the margins. By the time he was 10, Bach was an orphan. His older brother worked as a church organist and took the young Bach under his wing in teaching him music and enrolling him in a local school. Bach's growing skills landed him in positions of influence as organist and music instructor at large churches. Bach considered music as a form of worship and wrote a dedication to God on almost every music score he wrote. At least half of the music he wrote were cantatas connected with biblical themes. He also wrote masses, oratorios, and chorales for church music. Even if you aren't familiar with classical music, almost everyone knows this piece commonly played at weddings. Through music, Bach exposed the Bible to many parts of the world. John Eliot Gardner, who wrote of Bach's influence, said this, It's Bach, making music in the castle of heaven, who gives us the voice of God in human form. He is the one who blazes a trail, showing us how to overcome our imperfections through the perfections of his music, to make divine things human and human things divine. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley had little in his background to give us a clue that one day he would be called the King, rock and roll's first major superstar. He grew up an only child in Tupelo, Mississippi, because his twin brother was stillborn. His father was a truck driver with irregular employment, and so the family was often in financial straits. They attended the First Assembly of God Church, where Elvis got his southern roots in the gospel. Although his stardom eventually caused him trouble and tragedy, the King James Bible that Elvis owned is full of underlined passages and notes in the margin. He was especially fond of the Psalms, and below Psalm 11 he wrote this, In the Lord I place my trust, and he will guide me. Presley's first three Grammy Awards were all for his gospel albums. Elvis carried his Bible with him and enjoyed discussing it with others. Although a complex and controversial character, Elvis's life was definitely influenced by the Bible. Branch Rickey and Jackie Robinson Branch Rickey was the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers and a Christian but he is famous as the man most responsible for integrating Major League Baseball. As manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, he selected Jackie Robinson as the first African-American to play Major League Baseball. Jackie was a good ball player, but Branch Rickey also picked him because he was a Christian. Branch Rickey knew that whoever would be the first to break the color barrier in the baseball league needed the strength and wisdom from God in the scriptures to face the extreme prejudice which he knew would be certain. What Branch Rickey did in recruiting Jackie Robinson took a lot of spiritual courage. He believed God wanted him to do this, and it became his voluntary act of social justice. He knew God would give him the strength to fight the public battle sure to come. Jackie Robinson grew up in Cairo, Georgia, in poverty. His home was his single mother and four older siblings. His mother, Millie, took Jackie and her children to church regularly, and Pastor Carl Downs became like a father figure to Jackie during his teenage years. When his older brother, Matthew, won a silver medal for the 200-meter dash in the 1936 Olympics, 
Jackie was inspired to pursue his own talent for sports. At the University of California in Los Angeles, Jackie won varsity letters in four sports. After serving in World War II, Jackie began to play baseball professionally, leading to his meeting with Branch Rickey. In 1955, he led the Dodgers to a World Series win. He became the first African American to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame with a .311 batting average. Both Ricky and Robinson had a foundation in the Bible, and the older Ricky encouraged Jackie to live out Christ's teaching in the Bible, especially this verse, quote, I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other one also, end quote. When asked how Jackie dealt with all the racism, he said this, I had a lot of faith in God. There's nothing like faith in God to help a fellow who gets booted around once in a while. In the next video, let's look at some of the theologians, advocates, and statesmen who were influenced by the Bible and made a difference to their societies.